Okay. This is my first time. Second. 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 First time. Second time. Welcome to Babylon 5 for the umpteenth time. We're going to get there. Someday we're going to talk about how we watch this for the 47th time. Welcome to everyone here. If you've not joined us for Stargate SG-1 for the first time, you're about to see our exciting new format that we use for that show. I think you're really going to dig it here. We're about to watch the pilot episode of Babylon 5, The Gathering, for what will be for us the second time. Brett yeah. and I are going to be guests on the Science Fiction Remnant podcast, talking about The Gathering. And I have a favor I want to ask everybody. And this is true. So Something Jeff and I have said time and time again. Babylon 5, the fan community of Babylon 5 is hands down the coolest, totally best community we've ever been a part of. And I've been a lot part of a lot of fan communities. This has hands down been the best. And let's be the best to this other podcast. Like let's let's be those people. So go over there, check them out. Um if you like what they do, subscribe. Well, With that, here's what it is. We go. As the TNT version, as you can see. This is the first time we've watched an episode of Babylon 5 together, Jeff. It is. Wow. All right, That's kind of go. fun. This is great. I was Look. there at the Ooh, dawn of the third age of mankind. First voice you hear. How awesome is that? To central computer you can tell they're trying to just make it feel big and oh, epic yeah. with the music and the big sweeping like, you're in. Approach vector five, five, you, you know what it kind of feels five, to five, me five, like right now it feels like the entrance like the, the intro to like a disney ride totally like yes. all the setup like that's what it feels like to me right now look at that ponytail, ponytail. that guy's gonna start working with byron pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> okay we do this quiet by the to this day no one knows what happened to it yeah, but when you find out, it's going to be awesome, <laughs> right? Hey, you know, I think that Babylon Four thing is going to be a going to be a big thing. It seems like a mystery. Might be a thing. Yeah, that's so much makeup. It looks Ready? nothing like her. Well, and I notice the the head bone comes like way out this way. It doesn't look like bone. It just looks like a head a dress, so yeah. a headdress sort of thing. You can definitely see they tried to masculine up her face a little bit. Like they're really going for that uh, androgynous look. Culture. They did. However, I noted. When he just got the buzz about her, the pronouns they used was she and her. That's him. Impossible. There are no more way. Really? Go. Yep. Wow. Well, see, look at that. Oh yeah. Confirm incoming ship. Ed Wasser. And all because he wants to play. There he is again. Oh my God, his hair is yeah. awesome. Get me the commander fast, and let's just hope nothing else goes wrong. Not exactly fair. Mark That's not Catherine Sakai. I was in a hurry. Not at all. We'll discuss that later. This is late 80s TV heartthrob. One hour, 40 minutes. Just in time for the reception. From Central Casting. I'll tell you all about it when you arrive. On my way, I picked up some Carnelian bed sheets. They're supposed to be completely frictionless. Scene one in 40. I still want to know what that would be like. Yeah. I I I, think you would just slide off. I was going to say, not as cool as it sounds. You need friction to... To not move. And to move, <laughs> like in at all specific right? ways, like you know, there's. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna share something, and I'm gonna try to be high level and not super thirteen gross about it. Okay, uh, not too long ago, uh, bought a new bed, and when you go buy a new mattress, you know they tell you lay on it, uh-huh. you know, make sure it's comfortable, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I set the pillows up in a certain way and got onto my knees on the mattress and I <laughs> tested the mattress. <laughs> you know what? That is a legitimate thing to do. Katzel has had this character there. figured out Good already. Like, to you, Lieutenant Commander. That is the Jakar we just saw in the last episode of Babylon 5, season 5. Uh, Get a boldy, my good close friend. Oh Get no! No! Oh, no! Good close friend. No, he said it wrong. My wallet. Come on, get a baldy. I am empowered to compensate you quite handsomely for your genetic background. The process would be either a direct mating, 
you and I, or the donation of vital cells from which we could clone a replicant. Yes, obviously the cloning is less efficient since we have to grow the clone, so payment would have to be proportionately smaller, and we'd still have to fuse your genes with our own, and that would take even longer. The direct mating is far more cost-effective. Now, would you prefer to be conscious or unconscious during the mating? I would prefer conscious, but I don't know what your... Dude, that's a heck of a salesman right there. He didn't even ask that's for the sale. He just cool. assumed it. Just, like, just going in. It's so good. Confirm I would prefer doctor. conscious. You are clear for docking. Please surrender. That you will never again mention the Great Council in my presence. Three. Gravitas. Six will crush your ribs to jelly. Great and Council? Wow. Four. Gravitas. Five. Don't don't submit. Don't submit. Don't oh my scream. god! You know I total. What do you call a flashback that hasn't happened yet? I suggest you leave now. Flash forward. Oh, flash forward. What a flash oh, forward to Cartagia and the whip. I don't know if that's intentional, but it's it's beautiful. Like the connection is freaking gorgeous, and I'm gosh. super glad they got rid of those dumb rings. Right. Open nine to five. Earth time. Like this, it makes so much more. Like this Anything makes the else? whole thing with Morden and stuff no. makes so much more sense. It also makes it so much more tragic because you're like, exactly. he's there. He sees how foolish it is, mm -hmm. and to do nice what he does shark. to go back and preserve it and get it back, like, pretty shock. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. I am. Um, I've been taking stims to stay alert. Oh, that's not a good thing for doctors it's on problems. Babylon Five. I, I wonder if they're setting that up well, for Franklin. Coffee? It's fresh. Like right here. Grounded like are they already the seeding it? In tears of Valen. How cool In is that? In tears of Valen. I'm stained. I did not have all the facts. I still lack some of them. What you lack is a conscience. I that is an interesting thing, considering what we know about Delyn and how she was the one who emotionally reacted to to kick off the earth centauri or earth Membari war multiple times she acted and then when sheridan yeah. died she acted re responded emotionally jacquard offered me an exchange what's My garibaldi drinking the screen in return for it's not water we never had a chance the sky was full of stars the sky star full of stars he said the thing one of ours <laughs> <laughs> Pen, the ambassador. <laughs> I think I got to him in time. If we could broadcast that signal to the Vorlon ship. I'm on it. He plays a huge role in this. Well, I mean, he's Corwin before Corwin. Totally. The proto Corwin. Unless we turn over the command. I have looked upon the face of a Vorlon. Laurel. And nothing is the same anymore. I remember that line. I remember this really clearly from Dr. Kyle. And I don't think what I understood at the time or that I remembered is that he looked at him at like minute 14. Mm -hmm. And here we are six days later right. in real time for you and me. And now he's saying this. None of this life-changing stuff reflected itself in any way right. through this whole episode. Right. The Minvari assassin looked at me and said, there is a hole in your mind. An old Minbari insult. I thought Nothing that you need to worry about. I thought Minbari couldn't lie. I'm just going to wrap up with one little thing. Um, I liked a lot of parts of this episode. They totaled about 18 minutes of the actual 25 minute episode that existed in this hour and a half. I remember liking this episode better than what I do now. I think people are aware it's super flawed. Yeah. It was done with a shoestring budget. Yeah. And and I think that we enjoyed it that first time around more because we didn't know anything. Yeah, maybe. We know. Everything now. was new. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like a oh look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. And like there's some there's some things that they they dropped and didn't become things. There's things that they put in place that they changed, you mm -hmm. know, a little bit. 
but the to me the parts of the episode that persisted were amazing. Londo and Jakar. Londo and Jakar existed mm -hmm. here. Peter Jurasek, Andreas Kotsilas had their characters figured. They knew who they were. Yeah. Garibaldi, right? Jerry Doyle. You take those characters, you pick them up from here, you plop them right into a tragedy of telepaths. They fit. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I did enjoy Jakar and Londo and Garibaldi, those three specifically. Um, but hey, I have something that'll brighten you up as we as we go out. Remember I dusted some stuff off from season one? Uh oh. This is my first time. Second time. Bye everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>